Hi, welcome back guys. Now this is part two of the videos on resultant moments. So if you haven't quite watched uh, the first one, maybe have a look at that before coming on to this video. If you have watched the first one though, let's get cracking. Now a quick reminder before we get into this um, is that a resultant moment is given by the sum of moments acting on a body. Now, at the end of last video, what I mentioned is that we'll be looking at a few more complicated examples, maybe where there's like more than two forces acting, or maybe the forces are going to be at angles and stuff as well. So we'll see that in um, a bit later on in this video. Now, for the time being, principles stay exactly the same. You've got a few forces here acting at a pivot point, which is over there. And what we need to do is calculate the anti-clockwise moments and the clockwise moments. So we'll quickly start by writing out anti-clockwise. And remember, anti-clockwise, uh, generally we give a positive sign to the anti-clockwise direction. And then for the clockwise direction, we're going to give a negative sign. So like that over there. Now maybe the next thing we should do is, because there are a few forces here, maybe identify which ones are going anti-clockwise, which ones are going clockwise. So for anti-clockwise, I'm just going to use a yellow highlighter to identify which forces are going anti-clockwise. And hopefully you can see from our forces over here that it is the three Newton force, so this one, that's going to be creating um, an anti-clockwise moment. Therefore, the other two forces are creating a clockwise moment. So I'll fill those in with a blue highlighter. And then once we're done with that, all we need to do is a few some more calculations for our moments. Now, starting with the anti clockwise moment. Be very careful because our pivot point is here and the perpendicular distance is in fact four meters to that force there. So don't be fooled. A lot of people will go all oh, three meters, but it's not that, right? So we'll need to do three newtons and multiply it by the perpendicular distance, which again is four meters. So overall, we've got 12 newton meters in the anti-clockwise direction. Now, that there we can give a positive sign to. And the reason why we can give a positive sign to it is because it's in the anti-clockwise direction. So we can go positive 12 Newton meters. Now looking at the clockwise direction. We've got two forces acting in the clockwise direction. I'm gonna start with this four Newton force over here. So for the four Newtons, we'll have four Newtons and multiply it by the distance, which is only one meter. So there we go, only one meter from the pivot to that force. So that's creating a moment of four Newton meters. And now for the six Newton force. So we'll have six Newtons multiplied by, and hopefully you can see the distance from the pivot to that force is six meters. So times that by six meters. And we have 36 Newton meters. And because we've got two forces or two moments, if you like, in the clockwise direction, what we should do is sum them, add them together to get like an overall clockwise. And that's gonna be 40 Newton meters in the clockwise direction. Now remember, for the clockwise direction, we said we're going to use a negative sign. So what we should do is actually write this as minus 40 Newton meters. Now, if we want to calculate our resultant moment, so resultant, all we need to do is add them two together. So we've got positive 12 Newton meters and negative 40 Newton meters. So hopefully you can all see overall that that's going to give us negative 28 Newton meters. And what does this mean? Well, this means actually that this is going to turn in the negative direction, which if you remember correctly, was the clockwise direction. And the resultant moment is 28 Newton meters overall. Now, here's another example. This time we've got our forces acting at angles. So we've got to be really careful because we need to get the perpendicular distance to those uh, forces. Now, let's start by doing exactly the same thing. We'll go with anti-clockwise. And anti-clockwise, we'll pop a positive sign on that. And for clockwise, we'll have a negative sign on that one there. Now again, just like last time, maybe we should start by identifying which forces are acting anti-clockwise and which ones clockwise. So looking at this, anti-clockwise uh, looks like only this one here, the seven Newton force over there. And therefore in the clockwise direction, we're gonna have this nine Newtons force over there and this two Newton force down here. So there we go, we're ready to go now.
Now, starting with the anti-clockwise then. So, anti-clockwise, we've got 7 newtons. And now, what we need to do is multiply it by its perpendicular distance. But, we don't have a perpendicular distance, right? Because this distance, the 3 meters, that is at an angle of 60 degrees, if you like. So, what we need to do, we need to do a bit of work. Let's try and draw in a perpendicular line from P to the force. And there we go. So what we want to do is work out this distance here. So what can you see? What we've done is we've created a right angle triangle. So what we should do is maybe make a, a small sketch off that right angle triangle. So I'll tell you what, let's take a bit of space over here and we'll draw that in. So we've got something like this. And now the distance along here is three meters. We've got our right angle over there. We're interested in finding that side over there. And we've got one angle. We've got this as 60 degrees. Now, if we labeled our triangle, um, you know, for Sokotoa, we've got this as our opposite and we've got this as our hypotenuse. So what we can tell is we need to use the sine ratio. So we know that sine 60 is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be 60 over three. And therefore X is just going to be three sine 60. So I need to multiply my seven Newtons by three sine 60. And that there would give me my anti-clockwise moment. So now let's look at the clockwise direction. So for the clockwise direction, I'm gonna start with the two Newtons. And why am I gonna start with that? Because that's already perpendicular. So that's great, it's really easy to work out. So we can just do two Newtons, multiply that by one meter, and we've got two Newton meters, nice and simple. Now the nine meter one, a little bit more tricky because just like the seven meters, it's at an angle again. So let's draw in a perpendicular distance there. So we've now created another right angle triangle. So we need to maybe make another sketch. Let's do it over here, something like this. We've got a right angle here. We've got this side as four meters. And we're interested in finding this here. Maybe let's call it Y this time. And we've got an angle down here of 30 degrees. So if we label our triangle again, this happens to be our opposite, and this again is our hypotenuse. So we just need the sine ratio one more time. And this time we can say sine 30 is equal to the opposite of our hypotenuse. Multiply that across and we've got four sine 30 is equal to y. And there we go, we've got our distance now. So this here is four sine 30. Let me get rid of that now. So to find the moment created by this nine newtons, let's now do nine newtons and multiply it by four sine 30. So if we just calculate both of these, so let's just work out um, that one there we've got as, I think 18 newton meters for this one. And for the anti-clockwise moment, uh, if you type this into your calculator here, I think it comes out as uh, a bit of a third. It's a bit ugly actually. So we've got uh, 21 root three over two Newton meters, a bit horrible, but we'll try and keep it exact for now. So you've got that there. And um, as you can see, we've got two moments here in the clockwise direction. So we should sum them to get an overall moment. So that's gonna be 20 Newton meters. And because it's in the clockwise direction, let's put a negative sign on there as well. The anti-clockwise is positive. So let's put a positive sign in front of that one. And now all we need to do is just sum these together. So positive 21 root three over two, take away 20 Newton meters. And this is also Newton meters there. And if you type that all into your calculator, I think overall it gives us a resultant of 1.81 Newton meters, two three significant figures. And uh, I think that comes out uh, with a negative sign as well. So that there indicates that we'll have this turning in the clockwise direction. Right, here's another one. Now, this time the forces again acting um, at an angle. So we need to do those triangles. So let's maybe draw those in. So from our pivot point, oh, that's a bit rubbish, let's try that again. There we go, right angle triangle there. 
and we need to find this distance um, over there marked as x. So if we did a small triangle again, let's go with one over here, we've got x, we've got 5 meters, and this angle of 35. Now if we uh, did some labeling, we've got our opposite over here, and our hypotenuse over there. So again, you can see we just need the sine ratio again. So um, sine 35 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so x is going to be 5 multiplied by sine 35. There you go. So I've got that distance. Maybe I can fill that in on my diagram. That's 5 sine 35. Now um, let's also create a perpendicular from P, uh, our pivot point to the 9 Newton force, fill in that right angle there. So this time we're interested in finding this side. So I'll call it Y this time. Let's make uh, a small sketch of it. So something like that, where we've got 25 degrees. That's five meters. We've got a right angle in here, and this is Y. And if we put some labels on here again, that's our opposite. That's our hypotenuse, so no surprises. Again, it's just the sine ratio one more time. And hopefully you can see that this is going to turn out as 5 sine 25. And that's what y would be. So let's just fill that in as well. We've got 5 sine 25. There we go. Okay, this is great. So we've got our perpendicular distances in. So let's just very quickly set up um, our anti-clockwise, which is going to be the positive direction, and clockwise which is going to be our negative direction. So there we go. Now let's start by identifying which one's going anti-clockwise, which one's going clockwise. So anti-clockwise, I'll use yellow for that one. And anti-clockwise, I think, is going to be the 8 Newton force over there. And for the clockwise direction, we'll go blue for that one, is going to be the 9 Newton force over here. So now... Let's get cracking. So for the anti-clockwise direction, that's going to be 8 newtons multiplied by 5 sine 35. Um, I'll keep it as that for now. If you want to simplify it down a tiny bit, we can go 40 sine 35. Uh, and that's positive, so we'll just put a positive sign in front of that one there. Now for the clockwise direction, we'll have to do 9 newtons times by 5 sine 25. And if we simplify that down just a little bit, we'll have 45 sine 25. And because that's in the clockwise direction, make sure you put a negative sign in front of it. So we'll keep them exact for now, so we can type this straight into our calculator. So to find our resultant, we're going with positive 40 sine 35, take away 45 sine 25. So hit that straight into your calculator. And um, hopefully that will come out as 3.93 to three significant figures. And that there is going to be Newton meters. Now, what you should know is this comes out um, as a positive. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that this is in fact turning in the anti-clockwise direction. So if you like that 8 Newton force is actually winning, if you like. Now, hopefully you've understood all of that. And here's a few uh, questions that I've put together for you to have a go at. So maybe pause the video, have a go at these, and then I'll see you uh, in a couple of seconds to go over the answers to. Okay, welcome back. Now, um, for the first question, hopefully you started by trying to identify which ones are going clockwise and which one are going anti-clockwise. So since we used anti-clockwise um, as the color yellow, We'll stick with that. So anti-clockwise would have been that force there and that force there. And then in the clockwise direction, we would have had the 6 Newton force over there. So hopefully you've all started well with that. Now, then we need to calculate our moment. So we'll go anti-clockwise over here. And remember, anti-clockwise, we've got a positive sign on that. And so our anti-clockwise moment uh, is going to be 4 newtons multiplied by 3 meters. So that gives us 12 newton meters. And then we've got this other force of 12 now. Now, again, be careful. I hope we didn't get fooled here. 
from the pivot point to the 12, the total distance is seven meters, right? So be careful. Hopefully you've done 12 newtons and times that by seven meters. So overall, 84 newton meters. Now, because we've got these two moments, what we should do is sum them together to get a total anti-clockwise moment. And uh, that's 84, add that to 12, 96 newton meters. And we'll put a positive sign in front of it because it's in the anti-clockwise direction. Now let's look at the clockwise direction. So for clockwise, we'll put a negative sign there. And there's only one force, which is a six newtons. So hopefully you've just done six newtons times by two meters. So we've got six newtons times two meters. That's 12 newton meters. There it is. And what we should do is put a negative sign in front of that because that is in the clockwise direction. So now to find our resultant moment, we've got positive 96 newton meters, negative 12 newton meters. And so overall, actually, that just comes out as positive 84 newton meters. And that positive there indicating that it is moving, in fact, in the anti-clockwise direction. So hopefully you've all got that for question number one. And now moving on to number two. So number two, we would have needed to draw some perpendicular distances in because they're acting at angles again, these forces. So maybe we should draw a perpendicular there and maybe we'll switch colors and go for a perpendicular there. There we go. So um, two small triangles. So it may be useful to maybe draw those two small triangles out. So let's draw that up there. And we've got 50 degrees in the corner. We've got 90 degrees here. And ooh, again, from our pivot all the way to this force here, can you see it's a total distance of seven meters? So hopefully you've um, picked up on that. So you've got seven meters there. And we're interested in finding this side. So that there is X. And uh, if you pop some labels on there for Sokotoa, we'll have our opposite over here, hypotenuse over here. And no surprises, it's a sine ratio one more time. Um, so hopefully you guys can see that for this, it would be seven sine uh, 50. We go and that's our perpendicular distance for that let's work out the perpendicular distance for the other one we'll call this one y and we'll make a quick triangle so here here and here this one is 40 degrees the distance is only five meters this time and here's our right angle and we're interested in this side now um, again pop some labels on opposite hypotenuse and it's a sign ratio one more time um, again, hopefully you can see that that's just going to be five sine 40. So for this one here, we'll just label that as five sine and 40. There we go. So we're ready to go. I think let's just pop down anti-clockwise and clockwise. So we'll go, I'm just going to go anti this time for anti-clockwise and that's positive and positive, oh, sorry, negative for clockwise. Now, anti-clockwise, which force is going anti-clockwise? Or which, one is, which force is creating an anti-clockwise moment? I think it's the eight Newton, so we'll label, or color that in in yellow. And then the 10 Newtons is taking this clockwise, so blue for that one there. So for the anti-clockwise direction, we'll have eight Newtons multiplied by seven sine 50. And so whatever value you've got for that, um, we'll put a positive sign next to it. And then for the clockwise direction, we would have 10 newtons, multiply that by five sine 40. And again, whatever value that gave you, make sure you're putting a negative sign in front of that. So hopefully you've got that. Um, and then uh, once you add them both together, hopefully that came out as a positive 10.8 newton meters. And that there was to three significant figures. And um, the significance of that positive sign there telling us that it is in fact rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. And so there you go. Hopefully you've got all of those. Well done if you've got them. And uh, thank you for watching. So hopefully that's uh, resultant moments sorted. So you know how to find the resultant moments in you know, quite a few different scenarios there. And now we'll need to use this um, to introduce something new called equilibrium. And that's going to be in the next video. So hope to see you there.